Hi there and welcome to Penguin Learning. In this National 5 in GCSE Maths lesson, today we are going to look at how we add and subtract fractions together. In particular, we are going to go through the process of how we go about adding and subtracting fractions and what we need to do in order to perform this. And we are also going to look at in the process how we simplify fractions, what a top heavy fraction is and also we are going to go over 4 examples which you can follow along with at home and at the end we are going to give you an example to try on your own. So let's not waste any more time and get started with the lesson. Ooh la la. Ok so we are going to go back and have a look at the pizza analogy we have said in previous lessons. So out of these 1, 2, 3, 4 slices, let's assume we have one slice which represents 1 over 4 or 1 quarter of the pizza. And let's say we have one more slice after that. So what we've really had, we've had one quarter plus another quarter and that's going to equal a total of two quarters. So what I've basically did there is add both of these top numbers together, just the one plus the one and that's gave us the two. And the bottom numbers stay the same because what we're saying is we've had one quarter and the quarter is represented by the bottom number plus another quarter and that equals two quarters or two over four. And we know 2 over 4 can also be simplified to 1 over 2 because 2 and 4 can both be divided by 2 to simplify the fraction to a half. And we know that of course 2 quarters is equal to a half because we can see here these two slices represent half of the pizza. And this can be done with any size of fraction. So this case here we want to add 1 over 6 or 1 6 to 4 6 or 4 over 6 ok. So what it's like saying is we have 1 6 and then 4 other ones, and then we can do 1 plus 4 gives us 5 6 or 5 over 6. And again what we are doing in this case is that we add both of the top numbers together and the bottom fraction that we are dealing with, in this case a 6, has to stay the same. And it's the exact same when we want to take away. So let's say we have 7 over 7, which of course just represents the whole fraction because 7 over 7 is the same as 1 over 1 or just the entire thing. So we're doing 7 over 7 minus 2 over 7 because the bottom number, also called the denominator, is the same between the both fractions then that means that we can allow for the addition or subtraction to take place. So in this case it's a subtraction and what we do, we take away the first top number from the second. So 7 minus 2 is 5 and then the bottom number stays the same. So it's like saying if we have 7 sevenths, we're taking away 2 of them so we're only left with 5. And again the key thing, even the key thing probably from this entire lesson is that when we want to add or subtract fractions the bottom number, so these ones here also called the denominator, has to be the same when we want to add them or take them away. But what happens when we want to add or subtract fractions which don't have the same bottom number? So in this example here what happens if we want to add one half and one third together? Well basically we can change how we write out a fraction by changing both the top and bottom number. What I mean by that is look at this simple example up here we touched on in the beginning. We know that 2 over 4 is equal to 1 over 2 or a half which shows that we can change how we write out the fraction without actually changing the size or the quantity of the fraction that we have. So that means if we want to add a half and a third together we have to change both of these fractions appropriately so that they maintain the same value of a half and a third but also so that they have the same bottom number and therefore can be added together. So the first step in doing this is we have to think of a bottom number that can be both divided by this one and this one. So what I mean is a number that can be divided both by 2 and by 3 to give a whole number. And normally the easiest way to go about this is just by multiplying these two bottom numbers together. So in this case it would be 2 times 3 and that would give the bottom number equal to 6. Ok so I've changed this bottom number to 6 and this bottom number to 6 but now what we have to think of is what these top numbers is going to be so that this one is still a half and this one is still a third. Ok and the way we do that is by looking at this bottom number compared to this bottom number. We ask ourselves 2 times what gives us 6 and we know that in fact 2 times 3 equals 6. So that's what we did to the bottom numbers on this fraction and by doing that we have to do the exact same to the top number ok. So in this case the top number is 1 
So because we times the bottom number by 3, the top number must also be times by 3. So 1 times 3 is just equal to 3, okay? So that means 3 over 6 is the same as 1 over 2. And then for this one here on the right, we have 3 times what is 6. We know 3 times 2 is 6. So we must do the same on the top as well. So 1 times 2 is equal to 2. So that means 1 over 3 is the same as 2 over 6. And then finally, because both the bottom numbers are the same, we can add the top numbers. So 3 plus 2 is 5. And the bottom number stays the same, so it's 6. So that means a half plus a third is equal to 5 over 6. So let's have a look at this next example. We want to add 3 over 4 to 5 over 6. And again, the process is the exact same. Because the two bottom numbers are different, we have 4 and 6. We have to make both of these bottom numbers the same so that we can add these two fractions together. And again, how we do that is we have to think of a number that can be both divided by 4 and 6. And just like I said in the last example, one way we can do that is by multiplying both of these numbers together, so 4 and 6, and we know that's going to give us 24. So what we can do, we can put 24 on the bottom, and that should give us the correct answer. But because we always want to leave our answer in its simplest form, we can actually think of a number that's lower than 24 that does the same, but we can get both numbers on the bottom that are both divisible by 4 and 6, and of course that's also 12 because we know that 4 times 3 is equal to 12, or 12 divided by 4 is 3, and we also know 12 divided by 6 is 2, so we know that 12 is a valid bottom number. Okay, it doesn't matter at all if you use 24, if you just want to multiply both of them together. That'll just mean at the end of adding both fractions together that you'll have to simplify. So having a look at the first fraction, we went from 4 to 12, and to do that, we have to multiply 4 by 3, and that gave us 12, okay? And the rule is, what we do at the bottom, we must also do to the top. So 4 times 3 is 12, the top is going to be 3 times 3, which is equal to 9. And then for this one on the right, we multiply it by 2, because 6 times 2 is 12. And then that means for the top number, which is 5, we have to do 5 times 2, which is equal to 10. And now, both bottom numbers or denominators are the same. That means we can add the two top numbers. It's going to give us an answer of 19, and it's 19 twelfths. And if we have a fraction in this form where the top number is larger than the bottom number, we call this fraction a top heavy fraction. Okay, and normally when we want to give a final answer, we don't want it to be top heavy. What we want is to have a fraction and then a whole number, okay? What I mean by that is like this. So if we have 19 twelfths, what it's like saying is we have 12 twelfths, which is represented as a whole, and then 12 twelfths, to get up to 19, it's going to be plus 7 twelfths. Okay, and then how we can rearrange or rewrite 12 twelfths is just by writing 1, which represents a whole portion because 12, 12 twelfths is the full thing. And then finally, if we add that to 7 twelfths, its quantity is going to be 1 and 7 twelfths. So that means, going back to the question, 3 quarters plus 5 sixes is equal to 1 and 7 over 12. So I just want to show you really quickly what would happen if we made 24 the bottom number, which by the way I said is totally fine, it just means that we'll have to simplify at the end, okay? So what we would do then is 4 times 6 gave us 24 for this first fraction, so that means for the top number we'll have to do 3 times 6, which is going to be 18, and then for the second fraction we did 6 times 4 gave us the 24, so that means for the top part it's going to be 5 times 4, which is going to be 20, and to add that up, because the bottom number is now the same, we can do 18 plus 20, which is equal to 38, and that's over 24. And now we know we can simplify this because 38 and 24 are even numbers, so what we can do is divide the top and bottom by 2. 38 divided by 2 is 19, and 24 divided by 2 is 12. So we can see we get the exact same answer regardless of what bottom number we choose, as long of course it can be both divided by 4 and 6. But it's always easier if we can choose the smallest number that does so. Now question 3, what if we want to do 3 and 2 thirds plus 2 and 2 fifths? Well because each of these fractions has two whole numbers, so we have a 3 and a 2, what we can actually do is just treat that separately, okay? So first thing we can do is just add the 3 and 2 together, and that's going to give us, of course, 5. 
And then since we've added the whole numbers, what we can then do is add the fractions separately, perform that addition, and then just simply add that to the final value that we got for the whole numbers and that will give us the answer, okay? So what I'm going to do is do the two fractions separate. So we had 2 over 3 plus 2 over 5. And again, how we do this is we want both of the bottom numbers to be the same. So we have to think of a number that can be both divided by 3 and 5. And as I said, the easy way to do that is just multiply the two bottom numbers together. So 3 times 5 gives us 15. And there's no lower number than 15 that can be divided both by 3 and 5. So that's fine as it is, okay? And now what we have to think, look at the first fraction. 3 times what gives us 15? That's going to be 3 times 5. So that means what we do at the bottom, we must do it at the top. So 3 times 5 is 15, 2 times 5 is going to be 10. And then for the second fraction, we had 5 times 3 gave us 15. So that means on the top it's going to be 2 times 3, which is going to be equal to 6. And now because both of the bottom numbers are the same, we can add the two top. So 10 plus 6 is 16 over 15. And again, we call this a top heavy fraction because the top number is larger than the bottom. So we can say this is also equal to a whole. So a whole is 15 over 15 plus what was left, which was 1 over 15. And 15 over 15 can just be written out as 1. And then we have the leftover 1 over 15. So again, what we did is we added the two whole numbers together. So 3 and 2, and that gave us 5. And then what we did was add the fractions together. So 2 thirds plus 2 over 5. That gave us an answer of 1 and 1 15th. And now what we have to do is add both of these quantities together. So that's going to be 5 plus 1 and 1 15th. And again, all we do is add the two whole numbers together. So 5 plus 1 is 6. And then we're just left with the fraction, which was 1 over 15. So just to recap, 3 and 2 over 3 plus 2 and 2 over 5 is equal to 6 and 1 15th. But for now this next one, question 4, let's say we had the exact same two quantities but we wanted to take them away this time. So we had 3 and 2 thirds minus 2 and 2 fifths. Well with adding what we could do is treat the whole numbers and the fractions as separate. But when we're doing take away or subtractions, it's not something I really like to do. Why? Well it just means that we have to take away the fractions from each other which can just end up a little bit awkward I think. So instead of doing it separately, I like to do it together. And the way that we do that is by transforming these two fractions into top heavy fractions. So that means that we have to transform this whole quantity of 3 into something over 3. And this whole quantity of 2 is something over 5. And a little shortcut I like to do in order to do this is multiply what the fraction is, so it's a third, by the whole quantity. Okay, so that's going to be 3 multiplied by 3. And that's going to give us an answer of 9. So that means 3 as a fraction is going to be 9 over 3. Okay, so we do 3 times 3, that gives us the top number, and we know the bottom number is going to be 3. And then what we had was 2 over 3. So that means this entire thing as a top heavy fraction is 9 over 3 plus 2 over 3, which is equal to 11 over 3. And for this next one, we do the exact same thing. So in order to get the 2 in a fraction form, we do 5 times 2, which is 10. So we have 10 on the top. And then the bottom number in this case, it's 5. And then what we have is the 2 over 5. So that means this is a top heavy fraction. 10 over 5 plus 2 over 5 is just equal to 12 over 5. And you don't have to do this full process. That was like the long way of doing it. A little quick easy way of doing it is that we can say 3 times 3, which is 9. So we times this by that number and then simply add on the 2. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus the 2 gives us 11 over 3. And then for this one, 2 times 5 is 10, add on the 2 gives us 12. So we have 12 over 5 here. So now that they're both top heavy, what we then have to do now is make sure that both of the bottom numbers are the same. And again, 3 times 5 is just going to be 15. So we're going to have 15 on the bottom. And then for the first fraction, we're doing 3 times 5 gives us 15. So that means we're doing the same on the top. So 11 times 5 is going to be 55. And then for the one on the right, we have 5 times 3 is 15. So that means we must do the same on the top. 
So 12 times 3 is going to be 36. So now both of the bottom numbers are the same. That means we can just simply take away the top numbers. So we're going to have 55 minus 36. We can do that as a little sum. So if we have 55 minus 36, we know that we'll carry one over. But So we can do 5 minus 6, that turns into 50 minus 6, put the 9 down. And then 4 minus 3 is just 1. So that means 55 minus 36 is 19. So that means we're going to have the fraction 19 over 15. And again, this is top heavy. So we want to make it non-top heavy for the final answer. So 19 over 15 is equal to a whole. So 15 over 15 plus the remainder, which is 4 over 15, because 15 plus 4 gives us a 19. That means our final answer can be written as 1 whole and 4 over 15. So again, you don't have to convert it into top heavy fractions, but it's just my personal preference, because sometimes if this first fraction is smaller than the second one, then you can end up with negative fractions but positive numbers, and that's just something I like to avoid. But if you're taught in the class to do the numbers and the fractions separately, that's totally fine as well. As long as you end up with the same end answer, then whatever method works for you is fine. But in this case, what I did was convert top heavy, make the two bottom numbers or denominators the same, take away the top numbers, and then convert back from top heavy into a whole number and a fraction. And that gave us an answer of one and four over 15. So here's one final example I want you to try on your own. I want you to do four and three over five plus two and three over four. Give it a try yourself and then I'll leave the answer down in the comments. So just to have a quick recap, we said that in order to add or subtract fractions together, the two bottom numbers of the fraction or the denominators must be the same. And if they're not the same, what we can do is multiply both of the denominators together and that will give us what the bottom number should be or we could just think of the possible lowest number divisible by both of them and we say lowest because that just means we wouldn't have to simplify in a future step but if we just multiply them both together that's totally fine just make sure and check your answer at the end to see if you need to simplify the second thing we do is we want to change now the top numbers so that the fraction quantity remains the same so let's say we've did step one and get the new two bottom numbers for this example, one quarter plus one seventh. How we get the top numbers is by thinking, how did I get from four to 28 for the first fraction? And we know that's gonna times that by seven. So four times seven is 28. So that means on the top one times seven, it's just gonna be seven. And then for the second fraction, we add seven times what gives us 28? And that's gonna be four. So seven times four is 28. So we do the same on the top which is one times four, so that's just gonna be four. And then now, for step three, all we have to do now is add the two top numbers together. So seven plus four is 11, and then combine this as the one fraction. So 11 over 28 for that final example. And again, if we have whole numbers and fractions, so let's say one and two over three as an example, we can either deal with the whole numbers separate, or we can combine it together by making the fraction top heavy. So I hope this lesson on adding and subtracting fractions has been helpful to you. And if that's been the case, like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. But if you have any questions on this topic, just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.